In this section, we will talk about reflex action. Reflex actions are actually spontaneous, automatic, uncontrolled responses to certain stimuli. Before we write specific things about it, we will take certain examples. What exactly is a reflex action? If somebody unknowingly we don't we are not aware of that if we get pricked by something then our hand suddenly with a jerk moves away from that needle or from that uh, thorn or whatever is there if accidentally we touch a vessel which is extremely hot containing milk or anything in it as soon as we touch it we feel it hot we leave it or drop it now here we have not given it any thought uh, thought what, what kind of a thought would come if the situation is if you are holding a vessel which is containing milk and is extremely hot if we are consciously doing something and if our uh, will and uh, voluntary actions are involved we would think that this contains milk it is hot if it drops then we won't have milk to drink and so on and so forth but what happens in reflex action is you touch it and you leave it you don't think about it what's going to happen after that if the that milk falls if somebody pricks us we are not going to think that oh i got pricked it's going to bleed i might get infected and so on and so forth as soon as there's a prick your hand moves away from it with a jerk so this is a spontaneous response the analytical thing the brain's involvement will nothing comes into action so how do we define a reflex action it is spontaneous spontaneous it is automatic and it is more or less same every time it is short-lived if you move your hand away it's not going to stay there for time for a long time it will it's going to come back to its normal position so it is a short-lived response and generally it is a mechanical action mechanical action and spinal cord is predominantly responsible for this because if a stimulus goes to our brain then there the analysis of all those things as we were just talking about that what's going to happen if the milk spills over and all those things doesn't or we don't take it to that level it doesn't go to the brain and that's why there is no analysis it is just a spontaneous reaction to certain kind of stimuli now the parts or the things which are involved in this reflex action there has to be an organ that is the sensory organ which is going to receive that stimulus so the sense organ part one then from sense organ the message will be taken by sensory nerve from nerve it is going to go to spinal cord spinal cord acts as a modulator it converts that sensory stimulus into motor from spinal cord it will be sent by sorry motor nerve to the effector organ effector organ is that part it could be a muscle it could be an organ where the effect is going to be seen so there is a sensory part which is going to receive the message is conducted up to the cns that is spinal cord in this case by sensory nerve spinal cord is going to act as a modulator then motor nerve takes it to the effector organ and the path in which this flow takes place is known as reflex arc path of reflex action is known as reflex arc so let us draw the path now and understand what exactly is happening so if we draw the section of spinal cord again and let us draw the gray matter h shaped 
inner and the various horns or the two horns this is the dorsal horn this is ventral horn and when we were talking about the spinal nerves we talked about these things also so the root or the fiber which emerges from here it's going to have a ganglia and this will be called dorsal root ganglion and this is the spine uh, sensory nerve from here is going to originate the motor nerve and when they come out they are in the form of mixed nerve so here what we are seeing is a mixed nerve and now when the nerve comes out there are two branches which are separating the sensory is going to skin and the motor is going to say the muscle of arm and here the stimulus is say a prick so now what is happening is again same thing the same path whenever a particular type of stimulus is received say this prick is the stimulus sense organ here is skin which is going to perceive that stimulus the stimulus is going to travel in this direction it is going to go to the spinal cord here again there are neurons and spinal cord as we said is going to act as a modulator it converts sensory stimulus into a motor impulse or motor stimulus and it will be taken by this to the effector organ say the muscle of hand in this case so if somebody pricks what is happening is the prick is the stimulus the skin has received it now the message has gone through the spinal fiber to the spinal cord or spinal nerve to the spinal cord spinal cord has changed that sensory message to motor and the motor fiber has brought the message to the arm muscle that move away from that stimulus so and it is a very quick response as soon as we get pricked the response is shown that means in this short period of time all this has happened the sense organ has received the stimulus sensory nerve has taken it to the spinal cord spinal cord has modulated it to motor impulse motor nerve has taken it to the muscle of the arm and the reaction is already done now there are two distinct advantages of this reflex action number one it is very fast it is very fast and because it is very fast it protects our body due to this very fast action it is a protective mechanism if we were suppose if we are holding that hot vessel and if it is a slow response then we would hold it our skin cells would get burned and it would cause damage to our tissue but if the response is very quick as soon as you touch it you leave it so this is protective so because of the fast action it is protect and second it is the spinal cord which is dealing with all these things imagine if all these simple simple things go to the brain the brain would get overloaded so those responses which are quick do not require any analysis of that response then why should it be sent to the brain spinal cord is also capable of performing that function so this prevents overloading of brain so this is what happens in reflex action and the path in which it travels that is from here it comes here and then goes this is known as the reflex arc so reflex action all these things are involved sensory organ sensory nerve spinal cord motor nerve and the effector organ the path in which it is traveling is known as reflex arc now let us talk about the types of reflex actions there are two types of reflexes uh, 
basically this classification is based on when do we get that kind of reflex. So two types. First is known as Unconditioned reflex, it is also known as inborn reflex and it is also known as inherited. For such kind of reflexes, no previous encounter with that situation or that stimulus is required. So as soon as a baby is born, the baby is born with these kind of reflexes. So as soon as a baby is born, it starts crying if it is hungry. So this is a response. The suckling of nipples, that also is an unconditioned uh, reflex. Nobody has taught the baby how to suckle the milk from the mammary glands. So this is, uh, these are certain things which are inborn. They are called unconditioned reflexes. The second ones are called conditioned reflexes. These are actually acquired reflexes. And for this previous encounter or various times we need to be stimulated by that kind of stimulus to get that response. We'll take an example to understand this. When we learn how to ride a bicycle, we are given instructions that with your right foot, you need to press the paddle. And when you're pressing the paddle, the left one is coming up. You don't have to press that one. When it comes right in the front, then start pressing with your left foot. The right one is going to come back. So you are mentally thinking that, okay, the right paddle, I'm pushing the right paddle. The left one is coming. I'm pushing the left one. This is when we are learning it. But once we have learned how to ride a bicycle, when we are on the bicycle, we never think that this is the right paddle and I'm pushing it. Same thing happens when we are swimming. When we swim, we are told that, you know, you cut the water by moving your arm like this, rotate the arm, bring it back. But those who are swimmers, those who have learned it, it automatically happens without any thought process going into it. But before we attain such kind of reflexes, we have learned it. We got that stimulus so many times that now it has become a part of us. Now while riding a bicycle, we don't think about the paddles at all. While swimming, we don't think that if my right hand is going like this, where is the left hand? It just automatically happens. But when we were learning it, we were given those instructions. So those instructions help us attain that kind of reflex and once we are comfortable with it, that just happens. So those are called conditioned reflexes. There is a very famous experiment which was done by Pavlov. It is known as Pavlov's dog experiment or bell and dog experiment. Now what Pavlov did was it is a normal thing that whenever we smell food or we see food, we start salivating. So what Pavlov did, he offered food to the dog and just before offering the food, he used to ring a bell. So bell became like a stimulus for the dog. He kept doing it for many days. And one day he rang the bell but did not give the food. And what he observed was that the dog had already started salivating and the dog had already produced gastric juice because bell was a stimulus that now food is coming. So this was sort of a conditioned thing which was given to the dog and then it just became a part of it that whenever there's a bell, it is going to be followed by food. So in anticipation, the reflexes released the gastric juice before the food could even reach into the stomach. So this is Pavlov's experiment. There is one more way in which we classify these reflexes that is basically physiological and anatomical. 
most of the reflexes are protective reflexes. So we call, we classify it as protective reflexes. Second one is anti-gravity reflexes. Anti-gravity is basically helps our body to maintain itself with the gravitational force. And the third one is known as writing reflex. It is actually position, how head and body are uh, adjusting to each other, how limbs adjust with the body part. So this is just to keep our body in a correct position. So these are also uh, one way of classifying reflexes. One more way in which we can classify it is, what is control in this reflex? Most of the reflexes are controlled by spinal cord. So they can be termed as spinal reflexes. There are very few which are controlled by the brain also. Then they are known as cerebral reflexes. But the most important and the most common ones are protective and they are controlled by spinal cord. They can be unconditioned, that is we are born with those or we acquire them over a period of time when we go on getting exposures to that kind of stimulus.